What is up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast. Hope you're all doing well out there. I'm your host, Wadislav, and today we're going to be talking about the Virginia Roberts versus Prince Andrew case once again. Uh, we've been talking about the potential pieces of evidence and witness testimony that she can present at a trial if this case goes to trial. And we talked about Shukri Walker in our past videos. We talked about uh, Caroline Andriano, who was uh, one of uh, one of Maxwell's victims. She testified against Gillian Maxwell at trial, and now she has come out and given an interview that confirms that Virginia Roberts contacted her back in 2001, March. So that's contemporaneous confirmation of Virginia Roberts' story. Okay, now there are some discrepancies between how Caroline describes it and how Virginia Roberts describes it, but those are things for a jury to deal with. The point is the the night that she had, that she claims to had with Prince Andrew, where she claims that she was abused, that night has been confirmed by at least two sources. Shukri Walker was the person at the nightclub, Tramp, who saw Prince Andrew and Virginia Roberts together. So that confirms another part of her story that night. And then the picture, the photograph we're going to talk about in this video uh, is another piece where they're at uh, Gillen Maxwell's house. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. So today... Uh, in this video, which was inspired by this article written by um, Baven Hurley. So the person we're going to be talking about today um, regarding this picture is a photographer, seasoned photographer, Michael Thomas, uh, who is a freelance photographer from New Zealand. He's a traveling photographer who is well established. He's um, he took pictures at Diana's funeral. He's been to war zones. He's been to the Olympics. So he's a seasoned photographer. And uh, you're seeing a picture of him right now on the screen. And uh, he has come out. He actually came out back in 2019, I believe, when this whole, um, you know, Prince Andrew, Regina Roberts thing was erupting in public. And he came out and he talked to um, he talked to the Independent as well as a couple other outlets regarding what he saw that day. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So Michael Thomas here saw the original Original photograph when he initially met with Virginia Roberts back in 2011 uh, before she turned it over to the FBI. According to him, she pulled out the original from a stack of other photographs from her time with Jeffrey Epstein and Gillian Maxwell, and he saw the original. I didn't cover this because this was not legally relevant to any of the cases. Nobody, no court documents have talked about him that I have seen, and I've seen every single, almost every single document that's been produced um, in all of the cases against Jeffrey Epstein. And okay, I've also been following Alan Dershowitz's lawsuits as well as um, the uh, Prince Andrew lawsuit to this day. And I haven't seen his name anywhere. So this guy was not legally relevant up until now, but now he can be legally relevant. Okay, he confirms that this was not some orchestrated photographed picture that she pulled out, uh, you know, strategically to smear Prince Andrew. This was just another picture in a in a big stack of pictures. And that's what he says in his testimony here or in his interview. It's not testimony yet. But this guy's testimony uh, at a trial, at a civil trial against Prince Andrew would be more evidence against Prince Andrew because this guy is not on anybody's team. He has nothing to do with Virginia Roberts. Uh, personally, he has nothing to do with Prince Andrew. So he's a neutral person. Who, who says that Virginia Roberts pulled this picture out and she didn't even realize back then what, what it could mean in the future, right? And this was around the time of 2011. So he he either went with Sharon Churcher or he went after Sh uh, Sharon Churcher did her story for the Mail on Sunday. So with all that being said, let's go over exactly what um, Michael Thomas here had to say. Okay, so Michael Thomas, a freelance photographer from New Zealand, traveled to Australia to meet Miss Giffray and uh, recalled her casually pulling the picture of Prince Andrew from a bundle of photographs she had held onto. So Michael says the following, quote, It was a normal print that you would get back from the chemist in the time of negatives. So he's talking about back in the 1990s when people were using those toss away cameras where you would take one picture or a couple pictures and then you develop them in the corner store. That's how it used to be. If you watch TV shows from back in the day, like the uh, like Seinfeld and other shows, then you would see this happening. We didn't we, nobody had like camera phones and, you know, pictures, digital pictures being developed right there. We had to actually develop pictures at a store. So things used to be much more difficult and kind of more fun, really, back in the day. And uh, they go on to explain here, Miss Gifraid didn't seem to grasp the impact the photograph would have and had kept it in a bundle with other images from her travels. Mr. Thomas added, quote, what I struggle to understand is that if it was fake, then why is Prince Andrew not suing every media outlet in the world for running? You know, that's a very, very good question that 
I didn't even think to ask. Obviously, all the facts are there, but sometimes you just don't think about questions. But that's a very good question. And I, uh, I'm hitting myself now for, for not thinking about it. But if Prince Andrew actually thought that this is completely fake and that and that he has nothing to fear in the discovery process and any of these lawsuits, he would have sued every single outlet, starting with the Miami Herald and then the Daily Mail or the Mail on Sunday, which published uh, stories and that picture. He would have sued everybody that he can find if he actually believed that he could win and if he had nothing to hide, absolutely nothing to hide, right? But no, they didn't do that. They didn't sue anybody because I, I, I think uh, it's because they don't want a uh, deeper investigation into this because there is some, uh, some uh, truth to what Virginia Roberts is saying and they do not want to get to the bottom of it. Otherwise, if they thought that picture was completely photoshopped and it was an Irish body double, um, then they would have sued a long time ago, but they didn't because they know it's real. OK, and there's no indication in that photograph to think that it was edited in any way. There's con like a consistency within all of the uh, all of the structures and the people inside inside the photograph. And you can tell that it has not been edited. And uh, Virginia Roberts had turned that picture over in 2011 to the FBI. So the FBI has the original. They haven't said it's fake. Nobody has confirmed that it was fake. So it's the it's the implication of of Andrew lovers and biased people who hate Virginia Roberts um, that say that. That's that say there's something nefarious about the photograph. There's no evidence of any kind to uh, uh, support that statement. Certainly no no legal evidence. OK, but Virginia Roberts side, I think they have enough evidence at this point to try to introduce that photograph. OK, so they have this person who confirms that he saw Virginia Roberts pull it out of another of a pile of photographs. Um, like regular negatives, um, re regular photographs that were developed from negatives uh, back in the day. So she, we, I've seen other pictures uh, from her negatives, from the negatives he's speaking, and they look, they have the same kind of like blurry consistency that this photograph has. And I'll put up some uh, some of those pictures uh, in the on the screen for you guys to see. Um, so th those these are all pictures that were taken back when she was with Jeffrey Epstein uh, in the uh, early 2000s. Okay, and they have the same kind of consistency to them. That they're, they're not as clear as the pictures that you would see today if you took it with a camera phone, for example. So, so there's much more evidence in favor of Regina Roberts than Prince Andrew. That's the bottom line. He has nothing other than his word, and there's no reason for us to trust his word. In a lawsuit, you need evidence. You need alibis. You need people that are willing to vouch for you, the witnesses who are willing to back you up, and, and Prince Andrew has none of that. OK, Virginia Roberts has Shukri Walker and Caroline Andriano, who confirms part of parts of her story, although doesn't agree with her 100 percent. And this guy can also back up her story. All right. So adding to the, the question about why he hasn't sued it, sued every single media outlet, he went on to say, quote, surely if they were reproducing a fake photo with all the implications it has had for him, that is the first thing he would do, meaning sue all these um, organizations that have printed this photo. Quote, at the end of the day, I just copied a photograph. I never expected it to turn into this. Uh, at no stage have I ever doubted it is a genuine photograph. That's the photographer who saw the picture in Virginia Roberts' hand speaking about its genuineness, according to him. Uh, an uncropped version of the photographs released in 2019 appeared to show Epstein's finger or thumb in the bottom right hand corner of the frame, which you're seeing on the screen right now. It also showed a piece of art hanging on the wall next to Maxwell, which could also be used to try to verify the image. So like I said in the beginning, this guy saw the original photograph that Virginia Roberts had back in 2011 before this story blew up. And he can confirm for the jury if he testifies that he saw the original photograph and it looked exactly like the one we have seen. OK, the one we have seen is uh, a copy of the original. It's a photograph of the original photograph. And um, and that's the excuse that that Prince Andrew side has has uh, had. But this guy is a very credible person. He has no reason to lie. He's not biased in any way. All he's saying is that he saw the original. Virginia Roberts didn't treat it like anything special, and it was with a whole bunch of other photographs that were taking, taken from back in the early 2000s, and um, and he believes that it's uh, an authentic photograph. He said, at no point did I think that this photograph was not genuine. So, so for a jury, this would be convincing testimony, okay? 
it's up to it's going to be up to them to believe him or not but he is legally he has legally valid testimony that is relevant in this case and i hope that sigrid mccauley and virginia roberts legal team is trying to get this guy to show up for trial or try to get a deposition with him so he, they can get his statements on record this is very important evidence to try to try to get the judge to convince the judge to introduce this photograph as evidence to the jury michael thomas's testimony can help um, convince a judge that this photo is actually admissible if he can um, he if he can validate the chain of evidence if he can if he can convince a judge that he saw the original and the original looked identical to this one then that is corroborative evidence you have Virginia Roberts saying that is authentic and you need one more other person a third party to also confirm it to have corroboration that this photograph is authentic. OK, it's not guaranteed to uh, to convince the judge. Judge Kaplan might be hard to convince, but who knows? He's been pretty good on this case. Um, but they have a really good chance now with Shukri Walker, Caroline Andriano and now Michael Thomas, three credible pe people who don't have any uh, reason to lie um, for for either side. All three of those people together could be convincing enough for the judge to find that there's enough corroboration of uh, of Virginia Roberts' story to actually introduce uh, this this photograph as evidence to a jury as admissible evidence in consideration during the trial. So so hopefully Sigrid McCauley and David Boyce are working on that. Um, I don't know what they're doing, but, you know, they're smart people, so I'm sure they're on it if they can if they find that it's relevant and uh, they find Michael Thomas to be credible, then they will probably be introducing him at trial. But we'll have to see what they do. But nevertheless, just legally speaking, his testimony will be very valuable to Virginia Roberts. So I just want to cover that and give you guys another piece of legally relevant information when it comes to this case. OK. All right. So as I got to say for this video, thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell and press all for future videos. And if you've been watching for a long time and you like my content, please consider supporting me on Patreon. There'll be a link in the description box down below and also in the end of the video during the credits. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time. As always, peace.